hyperbola can open up either on the x-axis so notice how if it's opening up on the x-axis or going side to side, it's the x squared is positive and the y is negative. So remember with the ellipse, there was an addition sign in between here. So for hyperbola, either x squared is positive or y squared is positive. Um, they, they are both not positive. So if it's going to side to side, x squared is positive and y squared is negative. And if it's going up and down y squared's positive and x squared's negative. So I don't want to really get into all the the a, b, c part thing. I think it's important to know that underneath the y is on the y is on the up and down part of the hyperbola. In this section all of them are centered about the origin. And then underneath the x makes up what go what's going on with the x axis. Now, to steps to graph a hyperbola is what you want to do is figure out if the hyperbola is going side to side or up and down. So remember, it's going side to side if it's the x squared is positive and the y squared is negative. And it's going up and down if it's y squared minus x squared. So you want to find the vert vertices by looking at if the vertices are happening on the x-axis if the x is positive and the vertices are happening on the y-axis or up and down I shouldn't say y-axis, I should call it the transverse axis if it's not centered on the origin, but all of these are centered on the origin so the vertices are on the, the um, up and down vertical axis if, if y squared is positive. So after you do that you want to graph your after you figure out if it's going up and down, find the center, um, graph the vertices, I'll show you how to do that. Then you're going to want to graph the asymptotes. So the asymptotes are, are um, oblique and they're always plus and minus the change in y over the change in x. So I look at that, you should recognize that it's slope. So I look at what's going on and, um, with my y over what's going on with my x. And I'll show that too. And then what you want to do is pick other points on your um, hyperbola. So in this case, you know, you're going to graph your vertices, which are right here, and you're going to graph your asymptotes. And then you don't you want to know exactly what the curve is looking like. So what I do is I pick a point. I, I plug a number in for x. So I could plug in x is 2, x is 4. And then once I get that y value, once I get that y value, I use symmetry to get the other ones. So this coordinate has to be x opposite y. This coordinate has to be opposite x opposite y. And this coordinate has to be opposite x positive y. So if I get one point, I can actually get four other ones to graph my parabola or hyperbola. So hyperbola has two branches. It can go side to side on the horizontal axis or up and down on the vertical axis. So to graph the hyperbola, what I want to do is I want to put it in standard form. So I need to divide all the way through by 64. So this is going to be x squared over 16 minus y squared over um, 4 equals 1. So now it's in standard form. This, per, this hyperbola is going side to side because x squared is positive. So I can get my vertices right here, which are going to be at 4, 0, and negative 4, 0. So I'm going to graph my vertices. All of these are centered at the origin. So then now I'm going to graph my asymptotes, which are y equals plus or minus change in y. So remember, I take the square root of 4, so it's 2 over the square root of 16, which is 4. So it's y equals plus or minus, oops, and this is x because it's oblique, 1 half x. So now I'm going to graph a slope of 1 half, like this. So here's my two asymptotes, like this. So my hyperbola is going to be squeezed in between these two ver 
these two um, asymptotes like this, it also needs to go through the vertices. So to figure out how it is, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a number for x. So um, I already know that negative 4 is 0. So I'm going to plug in negative 6. So I'm going to let x be negative 6, plug it in up here, and solve for y and write down what my y is. So I'm going to press pause and do that. So when I did that, I plugged in negative 6 for x. I got y was equal to the square root of 5 which is approximately 2.2 .2. and since I took the square root I did is actually plus or minus 2.2 .2. so that's going to give me with my symmetry um, four different points because I'm going to go 6 positive 6 2.2 .2, positive 6 negative 2.2 .2, and make my hyperbola and then I'm going to go negative 6 2.2 .2, and negative 6, negative 2.2, .2 and make my hyperbola. So now I have two branches on here. Okay, number 2, find the foci. So, you remember for an ellipse, the foci is c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Well, in a hyperbola, it's c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So if I have c squared equals this is already a squared and b squared, so c squared equals 4 plus 9, so c equals the square root of 13. I'm going to use that to find my foci. So this hyperbola is going, because y squared's um, positive, it's going up and down, so it looks something like this. That's a rough sketch. So the foci are going to be on the y-axis. Therefore, my foci are at 0 root 13, and 0, negative root 13. Okay, number 3, or 4. Graph the hyperbola and identify the domain and range. So to graph the hyperbola, first I want to recognize that this goes up and down because the y squared is positive. So my vertices are going to be at 0, 4, and 0, negative 4 because I took the square root of 16. Then, on the, um, I want to find my asymptotes by doing plus or minus y, which is square root of 16, over x, which is square root of 25 is 5. And then it's an oblique asymptote, so it's negative 4 fifths x. So that means that I'm going to go up 4, right 5, and... Um, left 4, or down, down 4, left 5. So this is an asymptote right here. And then I'm going to go up 4, left 5. And then down 4, right 5. Okay, roughly. And then my, um, I know it's going to go something like this, but I want to be more exact. So, um, I'm going to plug in, I can plug in, let's see, let's plug in 2 right here for x and see what y is. And I'll get four different points, so I'm going to press pause and plug in 2. So I got approximately 4.3 when I plug it in, so 2, 4.3, and then negative 2, 4.3, and 2, negative 4.3, because you took the square root, so you're technically getting some negatives and then negative 2, negative 4.3. So use those two to kind of guide more of your hyperbola. And the last thing I'm going to do is find the domain and range. So the domain is going to be, think of all possible x values. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. And the range is going to be, well, we can have negative numbers all the way down to negative infinity. So it's negative infinity, but we have to stop at the vertex, which is negative 4, bracket. And then we're also going to have nothing in between here and here, so we're going to start again at 4 and go all the way to infinity. So that's our domain and range. Okay, so for number 5, find the foci. 
So foci is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared, we don't know. That's what we're trying to find the foci, is 25 plus 9. So c squared equals 34. c equals the square root of 34. And now we have to think carefully, is this, what kind of hyperbola is this? So this is going side to side because my x squared is positive. So it's going this way side to side. So that means my foci are in the same part as my vertices. So my foci are going to be at negative root 34, 0, and positive root 34, 0. So to graph this, I'm going to find the vertices, which are at 5 and negative 5. And then I'm going to do my asymptote, so I'm going to do y equals plus or minus change in y, which is 3, over change in x, which is 5. So I go right 3 up 5, or up 3. I'm going backwards with this. So I need to go up 3 over 5. Here, 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 connect. And then I need to plug in a number for x. So I'm going to plug in 6 for x. Plug in 6 for x right here and solve for y. And that will help me get um, one point. I can use that to get three other points. So if I plugged in 6, I got approximately what's almost 2. So I'm going to write 2. So that means that 6, 2 is a point. 6, negative 2 roughly negative 6, 2, and negative 6, negative 2. And the domain is going to be, look at what we have for x. Well, we can go all the way to negative infinity, but it stops at negative 5 and including negative 5. And then it starts up again at 5 and goes all the way to infinity. And then my range is going to be all real numbers because this hyperbola goes all the way up and down.